Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is about transparency. As always in this channel we start from scratch, so we don't get really very far, not to very sophisticated whatevers, but we solve a task and the task is to do something about transparency. So let's create a plane here under polygon modeling and scale it up a little bit and make the grid invisible because it just irritates us. Now let's create um, a material for it, right mouse button, assign new material and we pick an Arnold surface shader. It currently has a weight of 0 0.8, that's the default, we can set it up to 1. We can reduce the specular weight from 1 to 0 because we don't want a reflection here. It's just, it needs to sit there, we just want to see some color. That's all. Not this color, that would be the specular color. We can close the specular section and we can close the transmission section, whatever is open here. And we want a nice color here, so we map the color. We click on this icon. And here we have a selection of textures we can use to kind of place on that surface. And uh, for this tutorial, I go to Arnold Textures and create some flakes. It's a very powerful uh, texturing method with only few parameters here. Very powerful and you can do it uh, in 3D as well. But that's something for another tutorial. I just want to use this for getting some color. Uh, strangely enough, I don't get the flakes visible here in the viewport, so it just looks grayish. But uh, it is there when you render it. Uh, we need a light, of course, so we introduce a sky dome light and we render it so we see the flakes at work here. Let's change the resolution of the flakes, just get you, give you a taste of what you can do with it. The color is here, we click here, so we're back at the flakes menu here. Uh, this is the scale when, when we reduce it from 0 0.1 to 0 0.01, so make it one-tenth smaller, we get this impression here. We can increase the density here, like this, like a contrast. Uh, the step basically changes their position a little bit. That's uh, at least what I guess it is. And uh, the normal randomization gives us more contrast in this case. So we have quite a nice and funky and poppy surface here. And uh, this is our first layer. So we put something on top. We just duplicate it, Control D, and move the duplicate up. The duplicate in this case has the same shader, so we have two of them. Uh, but we want a different one and we go for a Lambert shader now. New material, Maya. This is the most simple shader ever, probably one of the most simple ones, yeah. Uh, the color is gray, you can make it white or black, uh, and we have a transparency here. Let's map the transparency because we want this plane here to be partly transparent. And we can do this by using a bulge, for example, and we already in the viewport can see that the transparency works. However, when we render it with Arnold, we see a gray surface. And that's because Arnold does not respect the transparency of Maya textures. So we're kind of stuck here. What we'll do is we select it again, right mouse button, and we create yet another material, namely an Arnold shader, a standard Arnold shader, like this. And here we have the base set to 0 0.8. Let's put it to 1.0. Specularity can be down. And now we need to look for the transparency. Where is it? Well, it's a little bit down here and it's called transmission. And it's currently set to a weight of 0. So let's try this so it's totally transparent now and like this. Um, if we want to map a color to it, well map a color to the color so to say, 
namely a bulge, this is what we get, basically the same as with a Lambert before, but now when we render it, we get that nice effect. I wanted to show you two more things now, since we're here already. Uh, you can duplicate this, of course, and rotate it by some degrees, maybe by 90 degrees, sort of. So we have a, a more sophisticated look through two fences, like this. You probably need more light in order to see things properly. But now when you want to deal with the layers here, you actually use the layer editor. And I'll show you in a second uh, what this is good for. So let's pick the first one. That's the one at the bottom. And press Control A, which normally opens the attribute editor, but it does open the channel box. You can toggle Control A, Control A, Control A, Control A. You can also use this um, side tab here. And all the way down here, we have the layers. So with this selected, we go to Create Layer from Selected. So it's called Layer 1 now. And when we click here on Visible, it's gone. Is it gone in the rendering as well? It sure is. So this is a, a switch to switch it on and off. We do the same here. Uh, it's very fast, really. Create from selected. This one is gone now. And again here. So we have three layers now. And we can, for example, say we want to deal only with the middle one. So we deselect those two and work with the middle one. What are we going to do with the middle one? Well, we go back to the attribute editor right here, or Control A, and we can do things to that shader now. And that's the placement right here. So we can repeat it 10 by 10. So we have more grid parts here, and we can introduce some noise like this. 0 0.1. See the noise working quite lovely. You can animate all these parameters. Obviously there's another tutorial I did about exactly this. And now let's go back to the Control A to our other layers here. Make them all visible. And actually we can go to the top view now and render the top view. How does Arnold do that? Well it renders it just alright. The camera which is currently here in the viewport is being rendered. Now we need more light. How do we do that? So we just raise the intensity of the sky dome light. With the layers here in the layer editor, you can also do something like that. You make only one of them visible and render it or render the sequence if it's animated. Then you render the second one only and then the third one only and then you import the rendered image sequence into a video compositing software like Adobe After Effects or Premiere or Final Cut Pro X and then you can play with the layers and uh, this is, of course, more sophisticated than what you can do in Maya. Maya is not a compositing tool. It's a it's an animation tool, and we're already, in this case, getting close to compositing. Well, I did some animation, uh, just a little bit with this, and I'll show you this at the end now. And uh, have a nice day. Bye-bye.